The River Spey is the most famous of Scottish rivers, not only for its salmon fishing, but for the canoeist. The source is high in the mountains at Loch Spey. From here it runs for 107 miles, dropping 1,000 feet before it meets the sea at Spey Bay. The River Spey has a huge catchment area, including the well-known Monoliaths and Cairngorm Mountains. The river starts as a trickle, and by the time it reaches the town of Aviemore, it has a good flow to it. Because of this, we will start our trip here, and it will take us four days to reach the sea. May 2014, we're still midge-free. Feel free to share and... Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> The first day is a fantastic day to learn or reacquaint yourself with canoe skills. We paddle gently, winding our way through forests and rural farmland with the backdrop of the Cairngorm Mountains. Sometimes we see the Strathspey steam engine puffing along next to us. It is a good day to build confidence on easy water before setting camp at the boat of Ballyfirth. After breakfast on day two, the river picks up speed as we head down towards the bridge at granton on spain and the start of the famous salmon fishing beats. From here we will be passing many beautifully manicured riverbanks with fishing lodges small and grand. If you're lucky, you might see someone catch one of these great spay salmon. This wonderful fish which gave me splendid sport and it'll make some very nice supper in due course. Rapids become more frequent in the afternoon with fun grade ones. the great big bouncy washing machine rapid. It is then just a stone's throw before camping at Black's Boat Bridge for the night. This section of the river is the white water section, including the Grade 2 Nokandu Rapids and many others down towards Karen Bridge and beyond. One behind the other, close and straight through the biggest waves on the river so far today. I thought he, I lost him. Almost disappeared at one point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, it think, was just... I think I've got a couple of fish down here. <laughs> <laughs> The scenery is ever-changing, from open land to banks covered in Scots pines and other large trees. When river levels are good, we might have time to stop for a taster in the Abalawa distillery. continue past a few more distilleries to Craig Ellicott.
through the day there's something to keep your interest going and something jaw dropping. It's, it's just beautiful. And you do feel as if you're in the wilderness sometimes even when you just catch a little bit of civilization it still makes you feel great because you're on the river. You're not standing on the path looking at the river, you're actually part of the water, it's lovely. Unlike most large rivers, the Spey continues with good momentum down Strath Spey. We pass alongside hills and pass some large conglomerate cliffs before the landscape opens up as we near the coast. I think it's a good trip for anybody really, uh, regardless of your experience level, because people that haven't got any experience can pick up loads and get, everybody can get something out of it, so from novices to more proficient canoeists. And Biscuit's been really good, you know, he tailors his instruction to whatever level you're at, so yeah, it's good for that. It's, it's always managed to find a good thing in whatever we've done, and it, it just makes you realise that it's not disastrous, it's just, just normal and uh, there's no real danger in it, it's just, just fun. finishes to the noise of seabirds and the sight of the North Sea. <laughs> 